me start preaching. An apple a day is not enough. Hello, I'm Alex, special media producer for The Ground Zero Show with Clyde Lewis. And this is Ground Zero News. I'll be giving you commentary throughout this video, giving you the most up-to-date information known about this topic tonight. As I talk about the topic, images will appear within the video showing you what I'm talking about. Old Mother Goose, when she wanted to wander, would fly through the air on a very fine gander. Mother Goose had a house. He had stood in the wood, where an owl at the door as sentinel stood. This old Mother Goose nursery rhyme can be interpreted to find a very dark and sinister meaning to the identity of Mother Goose. The title, Mother Goose, originates from the 1600s, the time of the great witch hunts. During that time, witches had magical, ethereal powers and were labeled differently in early societies such as they had the ability to fly. The broomstick had been replaced by a goose, hence the name Mother Goose. A witch was often portrayed as an old crone with no man to defend her against any accusations of witchcraft. Witches are closely associated with living alone, noting house in the wood, Witches were known to have familiars, most often cats, but also owls, just like the modern wizard, Harry Potter, whose owl is called Hedwig. The identity of Mother Goose in nursery rhymes was therefore a witch. People were obsessed with witches during the 16th and 17th centuries, when there was limited understanding of the cause of devastating events, such as storms, droughts, and disease. The disasters were believed to be brought about by supernatural forces, which resulted in scapegoats, witches. A book called The Malleus Maleficarum was published in 1486 as a guide used for the torture and persecution of witches. The best-selling book of those times, also being sold out by the Bible, Witchcraft was outlawed in England in 1563. And just to give you some quick information, the modern day witch was actually depicted in the Wizard of Oz movie, yelling at Dorothy, saying, I'll get you, my pretty. There were also depictions off of that movie of minions she had, like evil flying monkeys, the ones that attacked Dorothy and the crew. Let me bring up a video just to show you what it oh, She looked. wouldn't want them so badly. You stay out of this, Glinda, or I'll fix you as well. Oh, <laughs> rubbish. You have no power here. Be gone before somebody drops the house on you too. Very well. I'll bide my time. And as for you, my fine lady, it's true, I can't attend you here and now as I'd like, but just try to stay out of my way. Just try. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog too. <laughs> A caller tonight that we had, Dennis from Texas, says that he he interacted with a witch. I'll bring up the call right now. Here we go. Okay, let's go to Dennis in Texas. Uh, Dennis, you have a few minutes. Take us. Uh, tell us what you, what's on your mind tonight. Well, uh, when I first moved to Texas, uh, I went to Corpus Christi uh, from the Chicago, Milwaukee area, mm -hmm. and uh, I. I uh, was sharing a room with a Spanish guy, and he had a, a couple of sisters, and they were always flirting with me. They were young, and uh, once the one named Margaret uh, approached me one afternoon, and, and she said, that, Dennis, I can uh, conjure demons. And she had this huge smile on her face, and she had these eyes like, oh, I just can't wait to show you. You know, she, she I knew she was, I was a new Christian, and I didn't understand really about demons. I didn't, I just looked at her like, well, she's got something, but I don't know what it is, and I was, you know, I just kind of, I was kind of dumbfounded, and I said, well, go ahead and Let's see it, you know, and she says, well, I really can't do it right now because it's too early. you got to wait till about 3, 3.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. 
And the last time we did it, we uh, we had a dog, a big dog in the room, and at the end, of it, he went inside the dog, and the rat dog ran into a coffee table and killed itself. Oh my God! So if you want to, I had a Weimar on her in the room, a big my big dog, and she, she said, "You can't have any animals in the room, you know, they're gonna kill them." And I said, "Well, yeah, I kind of believed her, kind of didn't. I didn't know what to think. I had other things going on, you know, and and." Uh, I really wasn't interested in dating. She was way too young for me, you know. And mm-hmm. uh, so apparently she said, well, don't worry, Tom, uh, Dennis, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you see it, I promise. It was close to Halloween. I just said, yeah, okay, well, I forgot all about it, you know. 3.30 in the morning, and I was, this, this, I'm just telling you exactly what happened. I was laying in a room, and the room was, uh, was, it was hot. It was uh, a hot October night. And all of a sudden, the room got real ice cold, and this blast of air came in the room, and I saw this big, I mean, the blackest thing you ever saw in your life. It was, it's, not, it's an unearthly black. This thing got on top of me and tried, you know, tried to choke me. And I just called out for Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ, and the thing immediately got weak, and it lifted up, and I whew, made a rushing sound out the door. And I, I couldn't believe it, you know. I just, I, I said this, but she did this as a prank, apparently. You know, she, apparently witches can actually send a, these entities after you, right? Uh, to, to kill you, or just to, she did it as a, a flirtatious prank. Believe it or not, she can, they can, they can order these things around like you would order a pit bull or a, yeah, or a exactly. Uh-huh. So for 22 years, I, I had these things. Uh, would they would appear in the room at exactly 3:30 in the morning? Usually they were real uh, dark entities, and sometimes they were solid. And one time I whacked one with the back of my hand, and there, it was solid. And I'm not kidding you. It was like uh, 10 pounds. It was a little monkey gargoyle-looking critter, and it had little red eyes and had uh, uh, wings like a bat. And I, I cracked him as hard as I could with the back of my hand, and I sent him flying. You could actually hear his toenails clicking on the linoleum. Oh, my gosh. Hey, all you Ground Zero fans out there. Thank you for watching. This has been Alex Pluton for Ground Zero News. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And listen to The Ground Zero Show every weeknight, 7 to 10 on KXL 101.1. Check out our podcast, uploaded every weeknight after the show. On SoundCloud, the link is soundcloud.com forward slash ground zero media. And again, thank you for watching. Have a good night.